Okay, dodging and burning helped a lot to make that mushroom feel like the back of the creature, but we still have some internal edges that we can deal with. And the first stop is using your soft edged eraser and then maybe being a little bit more targeted. You can make the eraser smaller then. So that those overlaps make sense. And that will also help with kind of the splotchiness of residual uh, color from the mushroom. But there's this back edge of the mushroom. I'm pretty sure that this is the back edge I want for my creature. So how can I cut that out cleanly? I could use the lasso with a feather. That works but it takes a long time. And to be really clear about it, I can turn off the layer behind with the hedgehog, just so I can really focus on this edge. So if I use the lasso, I have to kind of draw it. The lasso is gonna go exactly where I place it with my trackpad or with my stylus. And it's good to do it in chunks. And then you hit delete, and that feather will soften that edge by just a couple pixels. So it's not stair-stepped. And that looks pretty good. We could use the magic wand. And the magic wand with contiguous checked with the default tolerance of 32 will pick pixels that are similar to it, like this. But notice that that doesn't do a great job getting right up to the edge. And it's not, it's not softened. It's not feathered. So in order to feather it, I would have to go to select and mask and then feather it from there, which takes a lot of time and processing. And it leads a lot of kind of residual around. So there are some other selection tools within Photoshop. They are in the drawer with the magic wand. One of them is called the object selection tool. And it tries to be like a really smart tool. So basically with it, I draw a box around the mushroom. And what Photoshop tries to do with its AI is determine what the edge is of that mushroom, which is gonna be tough because one edge of it is really soft, but let's see what it does. And this takes a lot of processing, but it's gonna come up with something. And if I'm lucky, it will, it will mask this side. I'm optimistic because there's a lot of contrast between that and that. So it should be able to recognize that as an edge. And now I zoom in, I can see what it selected. <coughs> Yeah, that did a pretty darn great job. And so now if I hit delete, <laughs> it deletes my mushroom entirely, but it left the thing I wanted to delete. So I'm gonna do Command Z, and remember that you can invert selections. So I go to select and I say inverse. And now when I hit delete, it will be everything outside of the mushroom. Now it's not gonna give me a feather unless I'm on the lasso when I delete. And so you can see that it gave me a slight feather of a few pixels, which is really nice. So it's better than the magic wand in that way. And that means if I hit delete more, I can keep, keep feathering it slightly and keep biting away at it. So I really like that just two pixel feather even though it's a hard texture. Now that looks crazy. This looks like some weird insect abdomen, but remember I have the hedgehog to help flesh it out. So now I have the back of the hedgehog that I want. And before I do that, I think I'm gonna play with the direct adjustments of the hedgehog. Go to image adjustments, play with the levels. Now that I've kind of blended it into the mushroom, I might Heighten the highlights just a little bit. I might limit the shadows just a little bit. And then I can play with the midtone slider. So I want it overall darker, overall brighter. Maybe just a touch brighter. Then I'm going to go to color balance, my favorite direct adjustment. 
to play with the color temperature, which is so warm. I think I'm a little bit just more interested in it being slightly cooler. So putting more cyan in those midtones, putting a little less yellow in the highlights, maybe a little bit more red, or a little less red, and maybe a little bit of yellow in the shadows with red, like that. So these little adjustments can make a big difference. So that's where I am. Now I can get rid of the, the back on the hedgehog. And this is all out of focus. So let's see how the object selection tool, which is in with the magic wand, how it does selecting the back of this hedgehog and the feet. Like, why not? Why not really see if this tool can do as advertised? And this is a new tool for just the, the latest versions of Photoshop. And this one did terribly. <laughs> it didn't do much at all. So if I say now select inverse and I change it to the lasso to get the feather and hit delete and hit delete a few times, that's what it did. And it actually kind of hurt me because it took out some of the transitions that I had. So I'm going to go back before I cleared it. Well, it didn't hurt me that much. Let's see. I was worried that it, it took out some of these edges, but no, not really. So that one's not going to be that helpful. So let's try the other one. I'm going to do Command D to deselect. Now let's try the quick selection tool. And the quick selection tool is you just kind of scribble over the area that you want to delete. And it will try to guess what you're trying to delete. So in this case, it's the empty space. And as long as you're aware of what it's selecting, the biggest mistake this makes is it selects too much like that. but it can work well, but it will also leave uh, some trace elements. You see this little line here? So just things to be aware with your different selections. The only way to have absolute control is to use your lasso and to fully delete things at 100%. And that's why I like to have that middle gray background so I can see all of the this residual stuff showing up. But it did cut out the foot nicely for me. And I think the mushroom should make up for the, the back end okay. Okay, now I'm gonna play with the proportions of the mushroom a little bit. I'm just gonna warp it. And I'm gonna try to fit it into the anatomy as established. and get a little blend of those hedgehog spikes with the mushroom spikes. So it feels like it goes together. And now I'm gonna play with adjustments for that. So start with levels. I'm going to up the highlights. I'm going to darken the midtones a little bit. See how that lighting's just working better and better. And again, I'm going to play with my favorite color balance. Shift the midtones a little bit bluer. Help it fit with my creature. I want those highlights nice and bright, but not like green or yellow or pink. And then the shadows, maybe a little bit more cyan, but not too much. I don't want them to go green. Okay. Still looks a little green to me, so now I can go in with the dodge tool. And just hit the midtones again 
on the outside. Now the problem is this mushroom is really in focus here, but not so in focus at the edges. So is there a tool that can bring sharpness to soft focus? Kind of. It's right above the dodge and burn tool. It's called the sharpen tool. And you use it very much the same way as dodge and burn. I usually use it at a strength of about less than 50 with a soft large eraser or soft large brush. And just on the edges here, I'm going to hit it a few times and it's going to make things look a little bit noisier, but it will sharpen the, the contrast of the edges. Now here's an example of where it does it too much, when you start to get lots of different kind of colors. So you, you want to be careful not to do it too much. But this is one of the limited tools we have to bring sharpness back. It's very easy to blur. And sure enough, right under the Sharpen tool, or with the Sharpen tool, is the Blur tool. And that takes focus away. But for our creature, we want it all to be as in focus as possible. And I want to blend these textures. And in order to get some of those hedgehog spikes really showing, I'm going to use my lasso and just draw around a few of them. I have that, that two pixel feather on. My hope is this will help transition. Make it clear that these spikes are really there. So I'm going to select that kind of mask. And I'm going to delete, I'm going to select the inverse of that mask and delete it away from the mushroom. So I get a nice sharp edge just on these spikes. And it protects the parts of the mushroom I definitely want to keep. But I think I might want those spikes to continue onto the bottom. Like that. Okay, and I can deselect, and now that body is, is blending pretty well. And now, in the next video, I'll show you Clone Stamp, which will do the last job for us. But before that, I need a back leg. So I'm going to do some internal compositing here, and I'm going to copy this leg. Find the layer it's on, duplicate it, Command J. Make sure I got the right one. There's the layer, duplicate it, Command J, then Command T, flip it horizontally. And now, distort it 